Hi guys, so <clears throat> this is part two of the lecture on circuits and uh, the first part was on oil circuits and that was <clears throat> the whole goal was to visit every edge. So you could think of it as also as a problem that a postman would <coughs> face. A postman um, has to travel, has a certain r network road, roads that are streets that he has to uh, deliver mail. And um, the most efficient way for him was, of course, that he could make it in a single route, that he doesn't have to <coughs> go to a street and then return back or, or go to the same street twice because he has already delivered the mail on the street. So for Amos, uh, Euler circuits, you can also think of as, uh, as a problem of fo for Postman, the Postman problem. Now, Hamilton circuits... <coughs> There, it's a different profession that one sometimes thinks about. That's the so-called traveler's uh, salesperson, uh, the traveling salesperson. So uh, the deal is we have a bunch of cities that the, the, this traveler, this salesperson has to visit, and there are connections between the cities, roads or airline connections or what, what not. And then the, he, he doesn't want to use all the roads. In fact, he wants to use as least, less, little road as possible. So it's kind of almost the opposite. But he still wants to visit everything. <coughs> and he doesn't want to do it with, like, he wasn't visit a particular city and then three days later come to the same city because it's on the way to another city, okay? So that's the traveler sales pro um, problem. So each of these two circuits, the Euler circuits, you can think of a postman problem, so let me write it down. Euler, the Euler circuit is what, what you would do if you're a postman. And the Hamilton circuits is uh, for traveler, traveling salesperson. Let me just say salesperson, that's shorter to say. Okay, so it helps you perhaps uh, con uh, conceptualize this. Now, um, unfortunately, we don't have such a good answer for Hamilton circuits as we have for Euler circuits. For us, circuit was very, ni very nice. We, we had to basically look at um, and, and so, of course, we have our Euler circuits, and we have also the same notion as an Euler path. The circuit would be what the, where you, the salesperson starts from the same city and returns to the same city. As a Hamilton path would be where he visits all cities, but he ends up in a different city at the end of his travels. That might be okay for him. Seems more that circuits more better for him than the same for the postman, right? The postman doesn't want to end up uh, in a different town. But... So for circuits, for Euler circuits, we had a very good solution. This was uh, the odd degree, this, the odd degree vertices. That's where we could look for uh, solutions. If there are none, there's a circuit. If there are two, there's a path, but not a circuit. And if there are more, forget it. And with the circuits, we don't have any of that kind, nothing. Um, there are good, um, there are some, a couple of them. Um, criteria, we will talk about them, but what is missing is this even only if, the, what we call an equivalence. Um, so there are certain criteria that imply that there is a Hamilton circuit, but not every Hamilton circuit has that property. So it's if you if you have a, a graph and you look at these properties, and we'll discuss them at the end, and they are kind of extreme properties, properties that many graphs will not have, and yet they will have Hamilton circuits. So the Hamilton circuit problem is a really hard problem, and um, so let's look at, at, at let me first look at an example or two. Um, so, well, okay, yes, perhaps I should look at the original uh, example because, as I said, Euler was a mathematician, and that that's why the name Euler circuit is is given in in credit for his work. Now Hamilton was also a mathematician, and uh, in credit for his work. We, we call these Hamilton circuits, and he came up with the following puzzle. And this was um, like you had a globe, and on this globe you had basically um, in the globe in the sh shape of a dodecahedron. That, that's uh, what is a dodecahedron? That is uh, a body, that, a, a regular polyhedron with 12 regular pentagons as faces. So you have 12 pentagons that are fit together into a very regular uh, um, solid, 
which we call the dodecahedron. Dodeca means 12. Do, two, deca, ten. The 12th twelfth, um, the twelfth, uh, faced one, with 12 faces. And uh, there's a picture in the book. I'm, uh, obviously, I'm not going to draw that. And <coughs> so and, and on each of the ed <coughs> on each of the vertices on, the, on this dodecahedron, um, there are, by the way, you could ask how many there are. I kind of count quickly. I think there are 3, 6, 17 or 18. 18, I think. 18 vertices. Uh, uh, yes, 18 vertices. Is that right? 5... Well, we I'll draw it and we we'll can count it later. And so you have these uh, vertices. He put cities everywhere, and the question was: Can you uh, travel on on the edges of the of the dodecahedron so that you visit every city once? It's just um, it's a salesperson, but he made it to a game at a time in the eighteen hundreds, in the 19, late nineteen hundreds. He made it into a game that was sold, and it was made for a wooden dodecahedron with little pegs and 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 yarn that you could spin from one pack to the other pack. It was very primitive, of course, in, in the sense, not, uh, there was no electronics, right? So it all was a very, um, uh, how to say that, um, mechanical. And it was, a, it was a fun game, but it's not an easy game, and it has a solution. Now, let me, d therefore, draw the corresponding graph. So what it is, is, it, I remind you, we have a dodecahedron which has vertices, and the vertices are connected by edges. So if you would draw that graph, that the corresponding graph, but not in three dimensions, as the dodecahedron would be, but in two dimensions, it looks like this. So I'm going to try to do my best to make it as symmetrical as possible. So there's an outside pentagon. There's also an inside pentagon. And wait, yeah, okay. So let me, oops. In order to not forget anything, I'm going to have to do this as I try this inside, inside, inside. Then each of these nodes is connected here. And then in between, this one is again five, right? And in between there are one, 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 one. So this were another five then. Is that true? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then inside of that there are another five. Okay, and so how they're connected, and then this is connected to that, connected, so we have this, uh, yes, okay, so this is 10 of them, oh yeah, the outside ones are also connected to each other, Oh, 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 I see what I did. I forgot. I, I was wondering here. This, this this didn't look symmetric to me. I forgot to connect these guys. So this is connected like that. Okay, and then the five inside are connected. And they, are con they uh, go to the middle ones here. Okay, it looks like a bit of a spider's rack, but... Um, Okay, so that's that's the graph that corresponds to the dodecahedron. And so the question was, is there a, a solution now? And there is a solution, but I cannot give an algorithm to find the solution, so I'm going to draw the solution for you. Uh, <coughs> and that's not going to be easy. So um, let me, I'll do it in blue again. So I'll start as the here. I'm going to follow the one that the book does this way. Then you go kind of around this. Okay, then you go around this one. Go all the way to the inside, yes. Then go to the inside. And then go twice on the inside. So this is a weird thing. It's not symmetrical in, in its design. So now you snake around this part. You cover this. Now you don't go all the way around. You return here. Here, here. You see, it's, it's kind of... Not obvious, right? And then this way, and now, of course, we see how it works. So this is uh, a Hamilton circuit. Every vertex is visited exactly once, and we return to our original position. Okay, some, some other graphs here. Ah, okay. So there are no good conditions anymore. So we, we have to do some observations. Observation one, to observations. 
if there is a vertex, a vertex of degree 1, let's think about this. Can we have a circuit? No, because a circuit at least implies that you go to a visit um, a city or a node and then leave it from a different way, right? Because it's a simple circuit, you can go back the same way. So we have to have at least degree 2. Degree 1, vertex with degree 1, then there is no Hamilton circuit. Let me call it HC. Now, there could still be a Hamilton path. That's even harder to figure out whether it's a path or not. So here's an example where we have a Hamilton path here. So let's look at this guy. So there is no circuit because any circuit that ha has to visit this point, but it can only come from here and once it's there, it's stuck. But I can do still a path, so I'll do the path in different colors so that we see. I'll do this in green. No, perhaps green is a bit... Let's do it uh, red, like it's kind of not what we want. See, this is actually very... This simple graph like that are easy to uh, cover here. Here's an example of one where we have... Um, That we have neither. Let's do one way. We have neither. We have uh, here one, two, three, four in the bottom and one, two, three in top. I'm just copying this from the book. There are many more, of course, but just to, I don't want to do too fancy things here yet. I'll do another fancy one later. So, um, so we, we there's no path. Uh, no, there's no circuit because of what I said here, right? Because we have three of degree one, and that's even. But there can still be a path. Because if it's a path, then you it either has to start or end there. You see this? We started here. We could have also ended here. Or, for instance, even here we have, suppose there was even this more, we could still have gone there. Because now they have one, two of degree one, but there is still a circuit between them. But when there are three, it's not possible anymore. Okay? Now, there's another thing that we have to observe. Another observation is, if a vertex has degree two, then both edges must belong to the circuit. To the HC, the Hamilton circuit. Why is that? So, imagine we look at, at any of these points here. This is, this has, uh, this is, oh no, there are no degree two points here. Sorry, this, that's a silly example here. So, let's look at an example. Uh, well, let's look at this example, right, here, this example. These are the ones with, let me write the degrees here. This is degree 2, this is degree 2, right? Uh, this has degree 1, 2, 3, this has degree 1, 2, 3, this has 1, and this is 1. Okay. By the way, is there an Euler circuit? No, right? Because there are too many of odd degrees. Uh, was there an Euler circuit in the in the previous one, in this guy? No, because they, almost, they all have degree 3, so absolutely not. Huh? So, there are always roads untraveled. Here, uh, the same thing. Uh, but let's look here what I was saying. Look at this vertex of degree 2. My claim is that this and this has to be part of the circuit. You say, no, I can find one where we don't do this. Okay, so let's get rid of these. How would I do this? Try to do this. Okay, so I have to start from this one or end in that one. So let's start from that one. This, I'm here. Now, I'm, I was, I'm trying to avoid this one, right? I'm saying, no, no, I don't have to use that one. Well, how are you ever going to get there? Sorry. How are you going to get there? You can go here, but now you're still going to have to, if you want to go to that guy, see, if there are only two edges, and you have to, if there are only two edges, and you have to visit that vertex, right? That's the condition of the Hamilton circuit. You have to have an in-road and an out-road. You have to come in and out. And you do either in from this way or you come in from that way. And you go out this way or out this way. But in any case, you use these two vertices. But if there are more, if the, if the degree is higher, then the original one is, is an example of... Let's see if I can get the original one back. Yeah, that's an example of one where uh, 
uh, with degree 3, there are vertices of degree 3 that we don't visit. In fact, there must be a vert there's going to be one that we don't visit. Okay. So what conditions do we have then? So how can we figure out let's 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 use let's let's use this to this next the second observation observation here to to argue that there is no um circuit in this guy here this this bow tie or 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 um uh, butterfly uh, what do you call it so look, look look here where are the degree 2 here let's look at the degree 2 this is degree 2 degree 2 degree 2 degree 2 so by virtue of the fact that these edges almost belong to the circuit so this, 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 and this edge all belong to the circuit. But what does that mean? This means that all the edges are used in here. Right? So, a Hamilton circuit, we can visit every city only once. So, that means that we will come and go. In other words, only two of its edges will be used. Now you see that in this one, one, two, three, four of the edges are used. Okay, so there's another observation is each vertex will use two of its edges only in the circuit. So and, and that's what I'm trying to say. If each of these edges, by virtue of the fact that they are the edges under degree 2, right, that's this, every degree 2, both of the edges must be part of it. So all these must be part. I'm not saying which order yet. But the problem is that these edges are all edges for this guy, and this guy can only use two, and now he is using four. In other words, if he uses this one to come in and that one to go out, he has to come back via this or that one. But that's then he visits this place twice. That's not allowed. Okay. Um, so here are some conditions. Two theorems, Dirac's theorem. But as I said, there are conditions that guarantee for the existence of a Hamilton uh, circuit, but are not um, not always applicable. Namely, suppose we have the number of vertices. Let's call that n. And at least three vertices. I, I hope that is we were not too, talking about silly things with two vertices or something like that. Yeah. If the degree of every vertex is at least half as big then have a then there is a Hamilton circuit. Okay. So um that's perhaps let's look at the original Hamilton uh, problem. What are the degrees here? We, we figured out every uh, edge has degree 3. Okay? So all these edges have degree 3. But how many vertices are there? There are way too many vertices, right? There are, we, we said the number of vertices here in this graph was 20. So it has degree 3, but half of 20 is 10. So you see the condition of the Rex theorem is not applicable here. And that is, as a, why is this? Well, most gra nice graphs or, or interesting graphs are graphs which have a good amount of edges, but not too many edges either, right? If the degrees are very high, now remember, how many edges would there be? Can you figure that one out? Now remember, if, so suppose we have a graph that satisfies this condition. Every vertex has degree at least n over 2. Whether n is even or not, it's a number, right? It's, it's, this inequality still makes sense. How many edges do we have to have at least? Well, remember that the sum of the degrees of all the vertices, so you sum over all the vertices, that is twice the number of edges. Okay? Now, I'm saying that this guy is at least n over 2. And there are n vertices. So this thing, this whole thing, is at least n times n over 2. Right? That's what I'm saying, right? 
the degree of each vertex is at least n over 2, and I have n of those, so if n times n over 2 is this number, which is twice the edges. So we see here the number of edges is at least n squared over 4. That's quite a lot of edges. Okay? So for instance, to have like just, just an example of on, on 5 here, so let's do away with this guy. Let's do away, just have the 5. Um, oops, I didn't want to do that. Let me redraw it because it takes me longer. Well, now, now I'm almost there. Okay, let me do it. So here I have 5. So n is 5. So I want to draw, find a, a graph and, and see already how bad this is. I have a graph n5. And so what I need is that all edges have to be a degree. The degree has to be at least 5 over 2. It's 2.5. It means actually degrees have to be at least 3. Okay? So at least 3 uh, degrees. Every vertex has to have at least three, degree 3. So, okay, so I can try to draw a graph like that. So this is 2, right? So I have to do another one here. Uh, this has to be 3. So this this one perhaps... Uh, no, I still I still have to do this one, so let's also connect this one. So now we have 3, 3, 4, 3, and 3. So by this condition now, uh, this every degree is higher than half the number of vertices, so there should be a, a Hamilton circuit. And I hope it's not so hard to see which circuit I could take. I could just um, walk around and then make a little detour, and there we are. Okay? There is another theorem which actually um, is more general in the sense that if you have the condition in this theorem, Ohr's theorem, so again, Dirac and Ohr are two people, uh, mathematicians. Ohr's theorem says if <coughs> the, de the degree of u plus the degree of v, so for any two adjacent u and v, vertices, so you take any two adjacent vertices, then the sum of the degrees, if that is bigger than n, <coughs> then we have a Hamilton circuit. <coughs> this is also the case here, by the way, right? So again, th now the sum of the of adjacent ones have to degree at least 5, because we have still have 5 here, but you see the sums are either 6 or 7 which is all each time bigger than. And again, this is definitely not the case. We have 20 here, 3 and 3, that's only 6. Okay? Um, I think there's some homework problems where you see examples where this, each of these uh, things apply. Now, we will uh, talk about an algorithm that solves a version of this Hamilton and actually a version that is kind of important for the travel salesperson, so this traveling salesperson, or let's let's just think of, of this one. So I'm announcing it, but I'm not going to give it yet. So suppose that this is a network of of either this could be a network of different times. It could be just a road network connecting cities, but it's schematic. So this this is says that there's a connection from this city to the city, but we we should not rely on the size of these things to to make any conclusions about the length. That uh, the length, that it, uh, uh, the distance between these two. Because remember, a graph, I can move around these these things, these nodes, and I can re reshuffle them. Um, that is still the same graph. So therefore, each of these um, represent a road, not necessarily on scale. And what we could put is the distances on this road. Like okay, say suppose this would have been uh, ten miles, and this is perhaps a fifteen mile road, and this is a three mile, and this is an eight mile road, and so on and so forth. And then it's not a question not only can we f go through it, but what is the shortest path, the least travel distance that I would travel to visit all of them? And uh, that is, for instance, what GPSs do. They calculate the shortest path, uh, a circuit. So circuit is go around, but paths would. I mean, I haven't talked much about paths here because it, it's already so hard to, to see whether the circuits, paths are even harder to figure out. Um, that we need to, um, we, we will do some special algorithm to solve that. And that, of course, once we solve that algorithm, we also have found a Ham Hamilton path or circuit in that case. But I want to do one application, and this is so-called the gray code. 
So okay, Gray is a uh, computer science person. And the problem was is it was for the following. Uh, suppose we have um, a circle. No, well, sometimes it gives me. If I think I'm, let me see. I'm gonna try to make convince him that I'm drawing a circle, and he will give me a circle. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Think this is a come on. Don't you see them? He doesn't do it. Okay. So uh, for simplicity, I'm I'm gonna do the case of. Wait, should I do this case perhaps first? Yeah, let me do this case first. Although that it's it's not interesting enough, but let me nonetheless do it. So and and. The thing is, imagine we are dealing here with, let's say, a wind vane. And, and so the, the vane is pointing in a certain direction. And now we, wanna, we have sensors that try to, to say, okay, the wind is coming from what direction? Okay? And so um, the sensors, they are, we put them at different positions. Let's say we put, um, and we, 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 we decide, okay, if the sensor senses that it, it's somewhere here it will give uh, let's say there are two sensors that we use to to determine where so this is there how to how do you think of it so there's inside here inside in this single the, i put two sensors i'm not gonna I, i'm not trying to solve this problem physically or engine the engineering problem where or how these sensors would be i'm just saying the sensor would do the following it would say okay if this, if both sensors give zero, that means you're in this in this quarter. If both sensors give one, you're there, one zero there and zero one. So each quarter, so you you see, sensor one tells me uh, whether I'm on the top, right? So, no, sensor one it tells me that's the top. So you you could okay, perhaps we can imagine this. So we can imagine there's a sensor here, sensor. So here's the sensor. I don't know how sensors look like. So I'm gonna make some. So this is a sensor here, and it says, okay, if I see something in the top, then I'll, I'll, I'll uh, well, no, I guess the sensor should be here then, because it's for the bottom, right? Sorry. So, I repeat. So we have this sensor here, this is a sensor. And it, it, it sees, it tries to see, well, it perhaps it should be a little bit closer to the horizon, whether there is, uh, when the, the, the vein is in here, the, or the, the arrow, or the whatever it is that is pointing, it senses it in, in down and below this line. If it senses it, then it puts a 1 in the first bit. So this is the first sensor. And there's another sensor that senses uh, whether you're in the... Um, bottom right and that would be a sensor that I position here so the sensor is positioned there's also sensor 2 and it says okay if I see something in these two quadrants I, I'll get a 1 otherwise I put a 0 okay so you see that this is the the, 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 the codes that I would get um, that, that the sensors would read now I, Again, I, I did actually give uh, a physical solution to the sensor problem here, but that's not the issue here. The issue is the following. Suppose that the vein, the wind vane, is pointing somewhere, let's say, here. Okay, right? Now, it is very well possible, because it's so close to the, the next quarter, that the sensors make a misreading. And that the sensors... Uh, that... that that they both that okay that's so this is the actual position and or let's say it's it's wiggling a little bit and that's the other position okay that are very dear positions so we we don't know exactly which of the two positions it is but what happens now this position both sensors give zero this give both one so if they if, if this is the right thing and they measure this one they both are wrong so we in other words it's it's a big, and this is something what is called error, um, co error coding, coding um, information dig digitality, digitally, uh, so that you have as little errors possible. Because what happens when you transmit something? You have the ones and zeros, and you transmit this, and it could very well be that by by a glitch of the system or or a drop of the connection or whatnot, that a one turns into a zero. 
And what you want is that to be as little as possible from the actual value. So this is something for, from the point of view very bad. These two positions are very close to each other, yet they're completely different as far as their um, codes are concerned. Both say, both, here they both say 0 and here both says 1. That should not be. Something that is so close to each other, there should be only one difference. So the question now becomes, and sorry, this is a lot, lot of blah, 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 but what's the question? Can I uh, put in uh, a binary pair, binary number of two, length 2, in, in each of the quadrants, or for the four possibilities, so that any adjacent quadrant differs only by one byte? So you see, here the difference between these two is 1. The difference between the, the one, the, the, they have at least one the same. Let me put it in this, this case. One the same, one different. Here they both are different. Here again, one the same, one different. So this is a good, this, these are good. This sensor somehow is operating proper, properly, but these are bad. Because here, again, again, if this would be somewhere, um, the measurement would be around this here, then I could get this code or I could get, or get this sensor, which is both disagree with this measurement than from this measurement okay so we don't want that so how does we solve this well we make uh we have the four quarters here so these the the, the find out the regions in this case there are quarters but later on we will do mail i'll show you another example so these are the quarters so this is let's call this quarter oh sorry quarter one Quadrant one, quadrant one. Let's call it quadrants as you have you learned from trigonometry and so on. So it's quadrant, and I want now to do what I just said. And how does this work? Um, well, let's let's give these quadrants uh, numbers, right? Uh, let's let's give them binary uh, binary codes. So. Um, this is quadrant, say, uh, 1, 1, 1, 0. Sorry. Okay. I should, sorry, no. Let, let, sorry, I, I, uh, I um, introduced it wrongly. Let, let me not call them, sorry. These represent the quadrants, but I don't know yet which one. Sorry, that's what I wanted to say. And each of these quadrants, I'm going to give a binary, uh, um, the four nodes, I'm going to give a binary, um, what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we, sorry, let me say it. Same if we have a square. So this is Q2. Remember, this is the Q2. The QN is the N cube. With the vertices are the vertices, vertices of this N dimensional cube, which is hard to imagine, but it does exist. And the edges are the edges of that N dimensional cube. Now, of course, a two dimensional cube is just a square. And so we have this, it, that's the situation, that's the graph. Q2 is this graph. And so now I give, um, I label these things, um, let's say, let's, let's, the, the first digit, the first one, uh, this is 0, 0 in the first digit, and this will be 1, 1, right, top and bottom. Then also left will be a 0 in the second bit and a 1 in the third bit, in the second bit, a 1 in the second bit, sorry. So what I now want is, what is this? This is a transition from one quadrant, sorry, let me do it in different color. Th this wind vane that goes, this pointer or wind vane or whatever it is, goes from the transition from one to another quadrant, as I said, should result in a change of only one bit. Now notice that this is exactly what happens here. They're all connected and they're all connected. The difference between each of them is just one bit. So what I'm looking for is um, uh, an Euler, sorry, a Hamilton circuit in this path. So here is a simple Hamilton circuit. So let's see what this does. And this now tells me in this order that you now chose, <coughs> put in your, um, so I'm, I'm erasing everything inside here and I'm going to redraw now. Now, the, the <coughs> I used it to explain, but it is so it's a bit too simple here because there are only four i'll do another one very shortly and so now i just say okay i my part start uh, sorry this is a uh, circuit yeah sorry sorry it has to be a circuit right so and so okay start at one zero so let's call this one zero 
So I'm not talking about these sensors anymore. I don't know anymore what that that I leave to the engineers how to set it up. But I'm telling you, Mr. Engineer, make it so that this first quadrant is in zero. And now I travel to one one. So I'm traveling counterclockwise, say. So this would be one one. Then I have to go to zero one, and then I go to zero zero, and from zero zero I go back to one zero. So traveling this way corresponds to traveling that way. And as I travel, I put in the, the various values or the names of the nodes. And you see that I have obtained this. Now, <clears throat> this might be a bit too simple to solve, but it really becomes much more difficult if I have eight quadrants, eight sections, eight regions. A pizza pie, okay? So, uh, no, is it eight? Yes, these are eight, right? So we have a pizza pie, and now you have to, let's say, decide which slices you get. So what we need to do? Issue is put binary numbers. Now, how much there are eight? So I'm going to use the numbers 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, all the way up to 1, 1, 1. These are the eight binary numbers that will, um, of length 3, that I can use to numerate or enumerate these eight regions. Okay? But I want to do so that any neighboring one differ only by one bit. Okay, if I call this zero zero zero, then this has to have only one, one one, and two zeros. So if this has three zeros, then this has to be two zeros, and this also has to be two zeros because they are adjacent. Okay, so how to do this? Already on eight, you can try, and you see it's not so obvious anymore. So what we do is the same thing. We do a Q three now because we have eight regions. So a Q three is exactly a cube. So this okay, works for 2 to the n. If you have 2 to the n uh, regions or sec sectors, let's call them sectors, right? Then this you, you solve this by uh, the graph Qn, the n cube. And I do <coughs> do it here for n is 3. So let's draw the cube. Of course, the graph that represents the cube, I cannot really do this... Um, um, so, I'll, so a cube would look, look like this, right? So this is the front of the cube, and this would be the back of the cube. And then these would all be connected to each other, right? You see my cube? Uh, okay. And the crossings do not mean anything, we know that. <clears throat> and so, we let's again enumerate, let's say, um, so we can think of this actually x, y, and z coordinates, right? So if this is the x, y, z axis, so the x coordinate so this would be 0 in the x-coordinate. The, all these would have x-coordinate. The x-coordinate 0. Sorry, this is, if I think of this x, let me try the x axis. I'll draw the axis in a, in a different color. In like in like Let me do it in a light color. And perhaps also... Um, uh, oh, here. Um, so, okay, so we have... The, this is my x-axis. No, that's too light. Okay, let me do it in orange. So this is my x. This is my y. Uh, okay, and this is my z, I guess. Okay. So what are the coordinates in that? In if I use that as my coordinate system, so this would be zero zero. Oh oh oh. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Zero zero zero. This would have x coordinate 1 and y and z coordinate 0. This would have um, x and y as 1, but the z coordinate is still 0. This would be x coordinate would be 0, y coordinate 0, uh, 1 and 0. I hope I did this right. This is uh, x coordinate, the x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 1, and z coordinate is also 1. Okay, so this would be... Uh, uh, what is this? X y oh one 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 right. This would no no that's not one one one. The x coordinate is still okay. I did something wrong right. Y coordinate is one. X coordinate is oh z coordinate is still zero for this one. Sorry, this is the front one. The front ones have z coordinate zero. This one is zero, and the back ones have. So this would be one. 
0, 1, 1, this would be 1, 1, 1, and then, I'm very bad in this, you see that, and this would be a front one, 1, 1, 0. Okay, but what we want is a Hamilton, so we want a Hamilton circuit in this graph. Now, you might ask, is it true? Are we sure that we can do this? Well, I, Let's see whether in any of these two theorems, let's let's look at Euler's theorem, because we actually don't really look at it. Does order theorem apply? What are the degrees? Again, you see all degrees have, de all, the, all these have degree 3, right? There's exactly three uh, edges coming in each vertex. Um, so in, so there are any adjacent ones have 3 plus 3, that's 6, but there are 8 vertices, so it doesn't apply. And also, the, therefore, the Iraq's theorem doesn't apply, you can check it. So... We have no direct way of knowing that it exists, although there is a theorem that says every Qn has a Hamilton circuit. And so let's exhibit the circuit here. Um, and so, okay, I'll start from zero. You go up, down, but uh, up, across, but then go back to the back, go across. Don't go now because we cannot go that way now. We can go this way, then we can go this way, this way, and now we loop back. So, what does this mean? Okay, if I decide to call this 0, 0, 0, when, where I started, what did I do? I went, I, I lost my direction. I think I went up first, right? So, I went up, so this one, 0, 1, 0 is the next one. The next, so and what I'm doing is, as I, as I walk through my uh, Hamilton circuit, I list, I use each of the vertices as the new uh, code this is called a gray code. Eh? So every region, every sector gets a code. So we zero, 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 one. The next one we have code one, one, zero. And I'm doing this counterclockwise. I can do it clockwise. It doesn't matter really. Then the next one will be one, one, one. Then uh, zero, one, one. Then uh, zero, one, zero. Uh, one, one, zero. One, zero, zero. And back to zero, zero, zero. And now notice... Why is it the case that any two uh, sectors, the distance, the different, the code between two different adjacent sectors, is only one bit? They bit differ only by one bit, because this is the case also for a circuit, and that is simply because a circuit goes from a nearby, uh, from one vertex to another vertex, and you can either go uh, in the y direction and therefore the sorry this in this in the z direction this is the z direction so the z bit will change you can go in the x direction so the x bit will change or you can go in the y direction and therefore the y bit changes but nothing else because you go parallel or everything is parallel to the other directions so in a cube you have this problem this property that adjacent uh, vertices have uh, codes that are only differ by one that's just the way uh, coordinates work and therefore, a circuit in that will have a, the, the same problem, same property if I would project it down. Now, it's very hard to draw Q4, but it would give me um, a, a coding uh, in 16 sectors uh, of my pizza. Okay, that's all I want to say. I'll do some homeworks on that, and then we will continue in the next lecture on this very intriguing thing on what GPSs do find the shortest distance or the fastest distance, depending, sometimes they calculate in traffic and so on. Uh, how does that work?